Hello friends, I'm Abdul Ghaffar, Director of Campus Engagement and Leadership here at UNCP. I'm happy to announce to you for the first time since 2013, UNCP will present the Distinguished Speaker Series. With me today is our first speaker of the 2018-19 season, Mr. Martin Sensmeyer. You may have seen Martin in HBO's Westworld, The Magnificent Seven, and Wind River. He will soon work with Angelina Jolie on the movie Bright Path, The Jim Thorpe Story. Martin will play the legendary Mr. Thorpe in that movie. Martin, welcome to UNCP and welcome to our community. No, oh, thanks for having me. It's been great, man. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. You're a native of Alaska. That's right. You live in a place that has no roads. You have to fly into it by plane. Lived in a place. Lived in a place. Yeah, yeah. LA does have roads and yeah. planes and so forth. Too many roads. Can you, uh, in, in Robinson County, we, we like to ask this question. Yeah. Who's your people? Uh, the Tlingit and Koyakon Athabascan people from Alaska. It's two different tribes. My mom is from the Yukon, the interior. My dad's coastal from uh, Yakutat. And um, it's about 600 people there. There's no roads in or out. Um, surrounded by the largest mountain range in the world, the San Elias mountain range. Um, you have to take a plane to get there or a boat. Mm. So it's a beautiful place, man. Yeah, yeah. excellent, excellent. Yeah. Now, we've talked a little bit, and I think it's very interesting uh, the things that you've done to lead up to you being an actor. You've had many jobs. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the many things that you've done that have led up to where you are mm -hmm. in Hollywood right now. Yeah, I mean, it started, it started uh, I guess, when I was a kid. I started doing plays in school. Um, in, in elementary school, I did plays and, and um, just always daydreamed about it, you know, mm -hmm. acting and wanting to be in the movies. My brother, my oldest brother is like the biggest movie fan ever. He always had the most updated the laser disc when it mm -hmm. came out, the DVD when it, the Blu-ray. Yeah. You know, um, now he's on the 4K stuff, and um, but he always had this love for the movies, and I and I used to it, so watching movies at his place was like an experience, right? So I was just like idolized movie characters and and uh, just something I always wanted to do. I never thought I could because I grew up in a community, a fishing village, mm -hmm. um, not a whole lot of opportunity. Um, but man, it's a beautiful place. Um, but yeah, I started out, I went to college. Um, when I was 15, I started welding, um, building boat trailers and, and welding class and selling them to fishermen. And then, and at that point I decided I was gonna be a welder mm -hmm. after school. So I graduated high school three years later, two, three years later, uh, went to the University of Alaska Anchorage, um, uh, studied applied science and welding technology, got certified, started working in the field as a welder. Um, and when I was 21, I got a job on an oil rig up in Alaska, and, and I did that for five and a half years. But at that time, um, when I first got that job, it was 2007, I, moved, I came to LA to watch a Lakers game because I started making money for the first time in my life. I, and I've been a Lakers fan forever, so I, I had to go watch the Lakers play. I came down um, to LA, um, randomly ended up at an acting class just with a friend of mine and just tried it out, you know, and, and, and kind of caught the bug. Um, but it was, still wasn't something that I wanted to pursue or right. thought it was realistic uh, an idea. So um, I just went to class just for fun. But at that time, also, I, I kind of moved to L.A. Right when I first time I went down there, my two weeks off, I went back to work. After two weeks of work, I went right back to L.A. Mm. And I just kind of started doing that. Eventually, after about three or four months, I drove my car from Alaska to L.A. Wow. And I was like, I'm going to be here, you know. Um, but, yeah, man, it's been, it's, been, it's been a challenge. I've had a lot of jobs along the way. Um, a lot of different jobs in, in Alaska, some really dangerous ones. Um, but it kind of motivated me to, you know, if I, can, if I can succeed at this and do this and put in 14 hours a day, then, then you know, I can put in that kind of time to, to work on anything else and I'm eventually learn it, you know. So that's kind of how that, you know, just persistent, staying persistent and consistent with the routine. Right. You know, routines are boring, mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's, that's the, the blueprint for success, right? It's already there can't reinvent the wheel, so you just gotta do the work, so. Like many people, um, of course, who strive for success, there's always doubts, people, doubters. <clears throat> and you told me that you said early on, uh, I'm gonna work with Denzel. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna work with Denzel, yeah. and some people are like, yeah, you yeah. might be an extra. Yeah. And some people are like, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So how did that come to fruition? Because you work with Denzel. <sighs> Man, that's, that, that, you know, when I was 17, I went to Anchorage, Alaska for a drug and alcohol prevention symposium. And, and um, 
and my brother was the chaperone. He took, took me to a movie and it was training day. Mm. And so Denzel, Ethan Hawke, mm -hmm. and Anton Fuqua, the director. And, you worked uh, with all three? I worked with all three on Magnificent Seven. Um, but at that time, I watched that movie, and I remember seeing the streets of L.A. in that movie. Um, not, not, not the hood stuff or anything like that, but just, just the palm trees in general, mm -hmm. driving down the road, things like that. It just it looked so attractive to me for whatever. I don't even know why. Um, but that was my favorite movie at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and I just thought Denzel was the coolest you know, so I watched all. You're not his alone, movies. by the way. Yeah. A lot of people think like that. I watched yeah. all his movies, like right. every movie. I'm like huge, like really excited. Like, what's he got coming? Doing research on the internet. What's he got right. coming out next? You know, right. like, and 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 uh, you know, fast forward, um, 10, 12 years later, I'm shooting a short film in Seattle, Washington, and uh, and I sat there and I, I thought I felt like I had a premonition. Mm -hmm. sitting on the couch after we wrapped that film that never came out by the way and I was sitting there and I told my brother I said I'm gonna work with Denzel Washington one day and uh, he looked at me and he believed me he just said yeah, I believe you you know because mm -hmm. I, I sounded so serious and I was so positive you know and um, I never thought it would happen <laughs> you know <laughs> I mean I, I did I did think it was gonna happen but I, I was I guess I guess that was the pinnacle for yeah, you. yeah yeah it was like, wow, this is really happening, you know? So, yeah, wow. Denzel's great. That's amazing. So I know there were doubters along the way. So Still are. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So how do you deal with the doubt? Keep your focus and your dreams alive, but also yeah. deal with the doubters because it's easier. You have easier access well, now with social media and things yeah. like that. Well, my dreams aren't my doubter's dreams. You know, they're my dreams. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pursue them regardless of what anybody tells me. Right. You know, whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it. And, 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 and even if I fail, you know, because I, I don't think that failure is a, the opposite of success. It's a part of success. You never succeed in anything unless you fail first. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've always felt like if I try something and I enjoy trying it, then I'm going to get good at it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, that's why I still study acting to this day. You know, when I'm not working on a movie set, I'm in class studying with my teacher and, and a voice coach. You know, I have, I have the, one of the best teachers in the whole world, one of the best voice coaches in the business, you know, so um, I think it's just about, you know, doing the work. Yeah. That's excellent advice. We've had speakers, we talked a little bit about the series, like Maya Angelou, Henry Winkler, James Earl Jones, Spike Lee, Billy Mills spoke here, and they all talked about overcoming obstacles, and I know you've overcome a lot to get where you are, so share with us some of the things that you've had to overcome to get where you are today. Man, well, first off, that's, that's an impressive lineup. I'm really honored to be here <laughs> and, and follow them. You know, hopefully I can, um, I can't imagine I have anything. Um, <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. Trust me, so far, so good. Man, those guys, wow. I got to see Billy Mills speak once, and that was one of the most inspiring speeches I've ever heard. Um, but, you know, obstacles, as far as obstacles go, I think, I think they're already there. Like, they're always there. They're always going to be there. And, and so what I like to do is I, I, I like to think that I'm on, I'm, I'm on fair ground, even though it isn't. You know, the opportunities aren't fair. The, 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 the getting selected for roles, the, 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 the stories, being able to tell our own stories. A lot of there's, there's not a lot of fairness there, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're working towards that. But I don't like to acknowledge that any unfairness. I like to look at it like I'm on a level playing field. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best. And if I fail, then I can live with that knowing that I did my best. And if I succeed, then cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as obstacles go, I think it's just, you know, more than anything, more than any obstacle I've had to overcome to succeed, I think all those obstacles were, they're there, but also there, some of them are there because I put them there, mm -hmm. right? My weaknesses put them there, like that things that I wanted to get distracted by or other things. You know, it's, it's, and, and I think the biggest obstacle is accepting that you're going to have to sacrifice, right? I had to sacrifice time. I had to sacrifice time with my family. Every time I go home, my parents are getting older. You know, like I didn't get to be there for my little brother growing up his whole childhood. He's 24 now, right? right? Like I didn't get to be there seeing my nieces and nephews get older. And every time I see them, they're bigger. So to me, the biggest obstacle was just the amount of sacrifice that it required. And forget, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice my being around my family and my community, which is a place that I would much rather be than anywhere else in the world, yeah. than 
I have to work at this. I have to do my best. I can't waste time. I've had that epiphany several times. You know, every time I start wasting time, I have an epiphany. and I'm like, what are you doing? You have to get to work. You have to do this. You know, so it's just about, um, you know, believing in your ability, believing in yourself, and, 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 and um, don't be afraid to fail. You know, that's, that's the main thing. As you transition into the next phase of your career, you're becoming a role model. People are knowing you, not just for, you know, native kids, but you're becoming a role model for, for people in general. That's a, that's a, a burden sometimes. Yeah. How do you feel about being a role model? And do you accept it? Yeah, I have to. It's a responsibility. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a choice. It's a responsibility. Um, you know, and, and I think that I feel like God put me here for a reason. And, and, and it's up to me to accept that responsibility. So like you said, I have to accept it. Um, and, and, and that, that kind of, um, you know, I think about it. It's in the back of my mind. It's always in the back of my mind. I think about, as everybody should, I think about what I'm going to do before I do it. What I'm going to say is, does it matter? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it something that, you know, like I don't just talk, right? I don't just talk just to talk or I don't do things just to do them. There's a purpose behind, I feel like there's a purpose behind everything that I'm doing. And that's kind of a redefined uh, perspective for me. Um, but if, if, if I want any longevity in this business, then I have to take that approach, yeah. right? Because there's too many people that are out working you and there's too many people that, you know, I think, um, I, th I believe in karma. You know, you do good, you know, this like, uh, when I got the job for Magnificent Seven, I was working out in the gym and, and uh, Denzel Washington walked in there and, and we had a conversation and we spoke for a long time and uh, he said something that stuck with me to this day and, and it stuck with me mostly because it's something that uh, my, my dad has told me before. And he, and he said, you're here, young man, because it's not even about you. You know, you're, you're here because the prayers of your grandmother's grandmother's grandmother are running through your veins right now working. And, and that's, that's how you made it here. And so I believe in that, the power of our prayer. I believe in the power of, of, of love. And we have to give that to the next generation because that goes, it passes down and passes down. And we, we feel that. I feel that. My ancestors, your ancestors, you know, we feel what they sacrificed yeah. and, and why they did it. We feel that it burns inside of us. So I think we should all strive to be the best we can be for, for, for that sake alone, you know? That's, that's profound. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so as we talk about your career ascending, I guess the most exciting thing that's happened so far is that you're gonna be working with Angelina Jolie mm -hmm. on um, Bright Path, the Jim Thorpe story. And I already know that you are um, Jim Thorpe's very special to you. Yes. And, and I just briefly want to say some of the things that Jim Thorpe accomplished for those people that don't know. He was the first Native American Olympian. He won two gold medals in 1912. He played in the NFL for many years. Uh, and he was the first president of the NFL. Yeah. He was in a charter class of the NFL Hall of Fame. He's a NCAA Hall of Famer, track Hall of Famer, the whole thing. You play this play, guy. Played baseball too. And he played baseball yeah. and basketball. Yeah. So. That's a heavy, heavy role. I mean, a lot of people look up to Mr. Thorpe, and he's universally accepted as at least one of the best athletes to ever live. 100%. That's you. So how are you going to handle that? Just do the work. You know, the fit is a very physical role. Um, and and, and uh, I get asked that a lot. What, what does it feel like to be, have that honor? And, 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 and to put it into perspective for me, like, it's so big. It's like... For a long time, like when I found out I was going to be doing this, it's such a big thing that I'm like, I don't know if I can or should. Right. Right. Like, it's like looking at uh, a mountain that you have to climb over and that, and, and it's Mount Everest. You don't got no equipment, you know, yeah. like, OK, well, I'm just going to turn around and go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then you got to, you know, OK, well, no, there's a reason why you're here. And, and so for me, it's just about one, one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. I wake up in the morning, I go for a run, I wake, and then, and then I go home and I eat, and then I go and work out, and then I'm done, and then I stretch, and then, you know, if I, you know, so I'm working out two, three times a day, and, and I'm just getting started. Already right? training for the role. Just, yeah, and it's not going to happen for, you know, till next year. So, mm -hmm. for me, it's just about, like, I can't talk about what it means to me, I have to show you, and I have to do the work, 
And so that, that requires, you know, just you know, training like a professional athlete. And, and, and I've been spending a little bit of time in Oklahoma, and I spent time with um, uh, Jim's son, Bill, who's 90. Wow. And, and so, you know, I'm going to be working with a voice coach. There's so, many, there's so much work that's going to go into this. And, and right now I'm just scratching the surface, yeah. and I'm realizing that, okay, I'm, I'm, my, my battery is charged up now, and I'm ready to go that's awesome. and, and get to work. So that's I'm awesome. excited. So you're going to be the first Native man to play a Native man in a wide-release film. That's heavy. And you're talking about as a lead? Or? As a lead. Okay. Yeah. You're sure there's, nobody, there's been nobody else? You're it, buddy. You're it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I brought information today. <laughs> yeah. So Because I think about all the greats that came before right. me, like, you know, Wes Studi and, mm -hmm. and, and Graham Greene and Chief Dan George mm -hmm. and... Tantu Cardinal, all these great actors and actresses, and, and I'm like, man, yeah, that's. I didn't know. I didn't know that nobody had their own movie that uh, a wide. Re that's special. Very much. That that puts the pressure on me even more. <laughs> more working out, right? Yeah, more working out, more studying, more you know everything. Yeah. So, so I've watched you speak a couple of times, and, and you spoke at the, the Doyon Convention yeah. in Alaska, and I noticed the the audience was. A lot of elders, yeah. you know, and so you are a role model. Um, sometimes it's intimidating to me to speak to people who I know have been through more life experience than me and are looking at me to, to give them, you know, yeah. something they haven't maybe heard. So how does it feel to you when you're speaking in front of elders? And it's a little bit of pressure there. So how do you handle that? It's, it's uh, I think I, speaking in front of elders, you're, you're, it's like when I talk to an audience, I'm not talking at them, mm -hmm. I'm talking to them and with them. So it's more of an interactive thing. And I think that, you know, whatever I said at that time, it just happened to come to me because I was there and that's what was, what's what I needed to say. Mm -hmm. People came up to me and they were like, that. I really needed to hear that. You know, and, and all I was talking about was wellness, individual mm -hmm. wellness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can't tell you how to practice your culture. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how to honor your ancestors. That's not up to me. That's not my choice, mm -hmm. right? Like I can, I, but I, what I know is that, um, you know, when we take care of ourselves, that's how we improve the community. It starts with us. Mm -hmm. So, and then, it, and then it goes out into the world, right? So just, just working on my own individual wellness allows me to talk about it. Right. You know, and it's not, it's not, it's not, and, and, and it's not a destination. It's a journey, right? It's a lifestyle. Right. So, so I always think of it's a work in progress. I fail at it too. You know, right. I fall off and, and, and eat things I shouldn't eat or, right. you know, things like that. So you don't, don't beat yourself up too bad. If you, if you, if you, if you fall off, you can get right back up and pick up where you left off. Every day is a new day to, to ride the ride different. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Yeah. So you're of course a very talented person. You've worked with very talented people. We talked about Denzel. We yeah. talked about, you know, we didn't talk about Chris Pratt. We talked about um, Ethan Hawke. You're going to be working with Angelina Jolie. You've worked with Elizabeth Olsen, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. So what is it like to be working with people like that with that much experience, a little bit more experience than you have? Is that intimidating for you or do you, do you just get in and Absolutely. say, hey, we got a role? Yeah. 100% it's intimidating. Yeah. That's so what's great about How do you handle it. that? That's what's great about it. I mean, you, it's like, that's the best part, mm -hmm. right? Like, if it didn't scare me, I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. Um, but, you know, it's exciting. And, and I think you work with people like that. It's like Ethan Hawke. Um, I did this scene with Denzel, the opening scene of the movie, where I come into the movie. Yeah. And we had our dialogue exchange. And, and uh, Ethan Hawke was really, really happy for me after that. And, and he said, you know what you just did? He says... You got invited to play in the NBA All-Star game and you came off the bench and put 20 up mm. and you were throwing LeBron alley-oops. Yeah. And I thought about that and I'm like, that's kind of like, that's kind of what it is. They elevated my game. Right. Right. They elevate my game. Right. Like I'm, you know, I'm just the guy that connects the dots, the yeah. throw the extra pass. Yeah. Right. I'm not the, I'm not the guy who's going to give you 50 yet. Yeah. Maybe you one work, day I'll get there. Up. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think, um, it's just an amazing opportunity to be able to work with so many great 
actors and actresses that uh, you take that experience with you and, and you go on to the next thing. Yeah. You know, and, and I start over whether I'm working with somebody who's not experienced or somebody who's experienced, I prepare the same way. Yeah. So I want to do my best. We talked a little bit last night about your dad, which I didn't know he was a Vietnam veteran. That's right. And I know that you're very proud of his yeah. service and our That's community right. is very supportive of the armed forces. Yeah. So what does your dad's service to our country mean to you? Oh man, it means a lot. You know, he, he was, he, he's a warrior, you know, he's, he, he, he uh, was in the first of the seventh air cab in, in, in Vietnam in 1968, 69. Hmm. And, and he, volu he volunteered for a second tour after being drafted for his first tour. Wow. So, so he was spent 548 days in, in Vietnam and he was a recon team leader. And uh, um, yeah, he was, you know, Sergeant, um, it's an amazing man, you know, and, 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 and he fights for the land and he fights for the people's rights at home. So he's been, a, he's been very much an activist. He after. boxed. He boxed, yeah, he, yeah. Boxed, he fought in the Golden Gloves Championship three times. So he's always been very strict. At, 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 athletics was very important growing up. Yeah. Right? Like he used to wake me up at 5.30 in the morning, come knock on the door. Son, you going to the gym? Mm -hmm. I get up and I'm like, ah. <laughs> some days I'm like, yeah. Some days I'm like, some days I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Stayed up till, you know, 1 in the morning studying, yeah. getting up at 5.30. I'm still going to the gym, putting shots up. And, and, he, and you know, I'd get up in the morning and I'd go out to the living room and, He'd have a small bowl of oatmeal and, and a piece of toast, and you know, yeah. I'd eat that and go to the gym. And, yeah. and uh, that was, you know, that's kind of how he was. He just, you know, and, and, and always um, had a lesson. Everything was connected to a lesson, mm -hmm. and every, every discipline was, there was a lesson behind it. So, um, and I think that's important. You know, you, you shouldn't just punish kids just and, and, and without explaining to them why you're punishing them. Right. You know, and he always did that. So. Um, it helped me draw the distinction between right and wrong from a very young age. Excellent. And, uh, you know, very disciplined, very strict. Um, but, yeah, he's, I wouldn't be here without him. So. Well, it makes sense when you describe the discipline that you have in your life. Yeah. It's obvious that, you know, it's, it came from your dad because you, mm -hmm. you talk about that same discipline with your craft and so forth. So right. that's great. I know he was one of your heroes. Who are some more? Of My your mom. Heroes? Excellent. <laughs> right yeah. up there with him. Tell me about your mom. She, I mean, she was the first native woman to ever become a physician's assistant in Alaska. Oh, wow. She graduated from medical school at UW in Washington. Wow. Right. She's been a medical director and a physician's assistant at the clinic for 30 years. So she's getting ready to retire. Yeah. Um, but one of the most uh, kind hearted, amazing people you'll ever meet. She takes care of the elders at home, wow. does home visits, you know, does them for free. Like she's, she just goes, she takes care of people. She likes to take care of people and she's a provider. You know, and, and so she's and she and she lives a subsistence lifestyle. My my parents are very much about the subsistence lifestyle. Yeah. So I grew up hunting, fishing, you know, and, and, and all of that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, other heroes, you know, like some of the people that I grew up with in my community. Um, I think for me, um, a lot of my heroes today are the youth, you know, um, my nieces and nephews and kids that I look up to. You know, and, and, and there's something we can learn from children because they, they're, they're very pure and have and, and 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 their first thought always is like they're curious. Right. Mm -hmm. And they want to learn. So mm -hmm. like you can learn a lot from that. Like I'm so I always think like there's a part of me that always has to remain a kid and not just be playful and not yeah. that, but always curious, always wanting to learn. Right. right. And so the, the kids now I'm an ambassador for the youth for the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an ambassador for Native Wellness Institute, do workshops with these kids twice a year. Um, and uh, I just take a lot of that positive energy from them. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, cyclical relationship, right? Like, it, you know, we exchange energy, mm -hmm. right? And I get a lot out of that. So mm -hmm. people think like, oh, you're doing all this good stuff. I'm like, well, I get a lot out of it too. You right, know, like, right. it's, that's my feel, right. right? So those are my heroes too. Well, Excellent. I, I like the way that you recognized the people from where you're from mm -hmm. as your heroes. You didn't have to go outside of your community. Yeah. And I think it's people f important for young people to understand that you have heroes at home that yeah. you can touch, that you can be close to. So that's very beautiful. Um, we got a couple of minutes left and I wanted to ask a question. I know you're an activist also. And we, we've, we're discussing a little bit about Columbus Day here on our mm -hmm. campus. 
and um, some places are eliminating Columbus Day as a, as a uh, holiday. As they should. Uh, right. So what are your feelings on Columbus Day? Uh, abolish it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> abolish it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Like, that, that, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, I, and, 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 and to me, I don't think we even need to rename it Indigenous Peoples Day mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. because we're replacing something with something else. Mm -hmm. Right. And, 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 and that's cool that they do that in places. I like that. But just abolishing it would be cool, too. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. why are we honoring this man with a day? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think also, um, you know, they have to teach the truth about him. Right. You know, this guy was a, a bad person mm -hmm. and, and, and killed people as soon as he landed here. Right. Mm -hmm. Like and, and uh, how they manipulated the, 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 the natives down south even mm -hmm. with the with and 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 they had an understanding of astrology and they and they were like, OK, so in five days. There's going to be an eclipse and you have to give us all of your supplies. Otherwise, you know, we're going to do whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and they believe them and the eclipse happened and everybody's like, oh, my God, he's, he, he is a God, you know. Right. So so it's that the lying and deceit and stealing. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, like, why are we honoring that yeah. as a as a as a country? Right. So, yeah, yeah abolish it. Yeah. Thank you for that answer. Direct. Yeah. And, and we got another minute. I, I just wanted to ask you, I know you're uh, a Nike representative. Yeah. And you represent uh, specifically the Nike N7 line. Yeah. Talk about that real quick yeah. for me. Yeah, Nike N7. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, it's, it's a great organization. It's a great uh, thing they got going there. Um, they help a lot of communities throughout the U.S., native communities. Um, uh, percentage of their profits go towards that N7 fund. To date, they've raised five, six million, something like that mm -hmm. for communities. That's great. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, they're, they're doing their thing. And uh, yeah, I support them 100%. Great. And, and they support me, so it's, it's, uh, I have a great relationship with them. Sam McCracken, he's awesome people, I love him. And uh, yeah, everybody at Izzy, like all my, I'm really tight with those people. So yeah. they're, they're, they're good people, yeah. doing good things and doing good work. Yeah. And you're doing a lot of good things and a lot of good work doing too, Martin. Best, We're gonna, um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Likewise, we are very too. excited to have you to visit our campus and our community. We wish you safe travels and blessing on your future, future endeavors. Thanks for being with us today, friends. Uh, again, we're happy to host legendary indigenous actor Wes Studi in November, and we have a fantastic series on the horizon, and we're happy that you were here with us today. Oh, man, Wes is great. You're going to love him. Yep. And, and thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really appreciative of it. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.